Hi, Level 1 candidates. My name is Darren Kerr. I work here at Serify on the Mark Meldrum CFA course, and I'd like to share with you some tips for your Level 1 preparation over the final weeks before you take your exam here in August. What we're going to discuss here in this video would be really how to focus your time over these final weeks before you go and take your actual exam. How to use mock exams to best prepare yourself for the real exam, what to do over the final days before you actually go into the test center, and then what to expect on exam day. So let's begin. It's really important that you use these final weeks in the most efficient way possible as you prepare yourself for the CFA Level 1 exam. That means you need to do active studying through practice, meaning do mock exams. We suggest that you do at least five mock exams between now and your test date. If you have not done a mock exam already, we suggest that you do one right away, this weekend if possible. Do not wait to review your notes, to rewatch all the videos, to reread curriculum material before attempting your first mock exam. So many students feel they need to keep reviewing all of their material before taking a mock because they don't feel fully prepared. You're never gonna feel fully prepared for one of these exams. It's important to just try, to gauge your performance and to see where you're at in terms of your level of knowledge of this level one curriculum. After performing a mock, you can then formulate quizzes from the QBanks on the Meldrum site and the CFA Institute's learning ecosystem. By looking at the performance on your mock exam, you'll then know where you need to improve. So those quizzes can be directed at specific readings and even specific LOSs within those readings that gave you trouble when you were doing your mock exam. Question practice at this stage with just a few weeks to go is much, much more beneficial than doing a review of notes, a rewatching of videos, or rereading of curriculum material. You can return to watch sections of video, to read a couple of pages of the curriculum, or to fill in some gaps by reviewing, reviewing some notes, but after you've already done your active practice, by going through and doing mocks and determining what you're getting incorrect and doing some quizzes to practice some of those types of questions, and if you still have some difficulties, then you can go back and take a look at some videos, some curriculum material, and some notes. But it's important that you're doing this active preparation at this stage in your studies so that you're going to be fully prepared, or as best as possible prepared, for your upcoming exam comes August. Now, for ethics, this is a very, very important topic, the most heavily weighted topic here in the Level 1 curriculum. And it's quite different from the other topic areas. We suggest daily ethics practice over the final weeks before you go and take your actual exam. That doesn't mean you have to sit down and do ethics all day long. We don't think that that's an effective use of time. Instead, we suggest that you do somewhere between 5 to 10 ethics questions each day between now and your test. That's only about 15 to 20 minutes of studying if you go through those questions and carefully read the answer explanations but it'll accumulate over this final month. If you're doing, let's say, five, only five questions a day over a 30-day period, that's 150 ethics questions that you'll see between now and your exam. If you up that to 10 a day, or at least for some of the days, now you're getting over you know, a couple hundred ethics questions that you'll be able to work through between now and the test. And that should make a very big difference in your performance on this very important topic. Also, it should help with your confidence because when you go in and start session one of your level one exam, the very first set of questions that you will see will be those ethics questions. So if you can do reasonably well on those questions at the start, you should start to settle in and feel a little bit better about the overall experience in the test center that day. Now, what about those mock exams? How do you use them? in the most effective way possible over these final weeks. We suggest that you take at least some of your mock exams under exam-like conditions. It is possible to break up the mock exams and do one session one day 
and then another session another day. And maybe that's going to work for you based on your schedule for some of the mock exams. But we really encourage that for at least a few of the mock exams that you do them under an exam-like condition and go through and do session one, take up to 30 minutes of break between session one and session two, and then go on and do session two, just like it'll be on exam day. Reason, you're going to need to endure and concentrate for four and a half hours on the actual test. If you never practice that in your preparation for the exam, it might be difficult for you to stay focused through that second session on exam day. So really, it's really important that you do at least a few of the mock exams uh, in, in that exam-like format where you're doing session one, taking that short break and going right into the session two. The performance that you are able to achieve on these mock exams should guide your studies over these final weeks. You need to be adaptive with regards to your study plan based on the performance of your mock exams. And always consider the topic weightings when allocating study time over these critical final days of preparation. You have really important topics like ethics, financial statements, other ones such as quantitative methods, economics, equity, fixed income, and then you have some other topics that are a little bit less heavily weighted, such as derivatives and alternative investments. Well, it's important to know a lot about all, all of these topics. You, with the limited time that you have, really need to be thinking about where best to allocate your time. And obviously, it's going to depend on your knowledge levels for each of those topics, but should also take into consideration the topic weightings. Another important point when looking at your performance on the mock exams, do not expect improvement each time. We rarely see students moving uh, upward from Mach 1 to Mach 2 to Mach 3 to Mach 4 to Mach 5 in this straight line or this linear fashion. Likely, you'll see some improvement, but maybe we'll drop down a little bit after doing two or three mocks, then back up again. So what you really need to do is zoom out and take a look at how you've improved from the first one or two mocks that you did through until the final four, you know, Mach 4, Mach, Mach 5. So after you've done a handful of mocks, you should certainly see improvement from the beginning until now. But don't expect it to happen every single time. And the reason for that, these questions are formulated based on those learning outcome statements. And there are way more learning outcome statements that you need to know for this level one curriculum than there are questions on the actual level one exam. So you could have a mock exam that has some questions that for whatever reason, feel a little bit better with your knowledge level, but then another mock exam that you take after that one has some questions in it that you were a bit less comfortable with. Totally normal. And that's again why you often don't see that linear improvement each time. So be aware of that and don't get discouraged by it. Realize that over a series of mock exams, you should see that improvement. Now, what about the final days? So as you approach those final few days before your actual exam, this is the moment to do that overall light review of all of the curriculum topics. So you can use your notes, you can use a review of the formula sheets. You can go back and take a look at some of the more difficult questions that you encountered during your mock exams during those final few days to just make sure that you truly understand how those questions should be uh, addressed when you hope maybe see them on the actual exam. It's also a chance to take one last look at that ethics material. Remember again, it's the most heavily weighted topic on the exam and you must do well. Also, during the final couple of days before you actually go in and take your test, we do not think you should be doing mock exams at that point. The mock exams should be done over the final several weeks. Around one per week is a good um, number of uh, good way to spread them out. Maybe you can up that to two per week, depending on how much time you have available. If you have some time off from work, let's say, and you can really focus uh, pretty much full time on CFA studies, then you could probably do a bit more than that. But over the final couple of days, it's really not that helpful to go and try to do more mocks. By that point, hopefully you've done a lot of them and you've gone through them carefully and you've improved on your weaknesses. So here in the final couple of days, you should be trying to pull everything together 
get those formulas in your head and make sure you're ready to go and apply them on the exam if questions that use them uh, are you know, coming at you on your actual test. And then some logistical things. Make sure you understand how you're going to get to the test center. Will you take a taxi? Will you take an Uber? Are you planning to drive yourself? If so, what about parking? How long will it take you to arrive at the test center? After you've determined that, give yourself some extra time, maybe let's say approximately 30 minutes, depending on where you are in the world, to be able to get yourself to the test center stress-free. Another thing, organize your passport and your calculators well in advance of the night before your test. Don't wait until the night before to realize that you don't have backup batteries for your calculator or that your backup calculator is missing or isn't turning on. Get that stuff organized a few days before so that if there is an issue, you have time to resolve it. Now, what about exam day? As we just said, plan to get there early. So as you arrive there, hopefully you're 30 plus minutes before your scheduled start time. Focus on what you can control. While the unexpected may happen, don't get derailed by some you know, unexpected event that was outside of your control. Uh, just to give you some context here, I've been living in Sao Paulo, Brazil for several years now. And at the test center here in Sao Paulo, a few years ago, the power went out during the CFA exam. The students had to just sit there in the testing room, hoping that the power would come back on. After about an hour, it eventually did. And the students were able to continue through and complete that session of their exam. But during that time, when the lights were out and they were just sitting there and waiting, they didn't know if the power would come back on or not. They didn't know if they'd be able to complete their exam that day or not. It was out of their control. They just had to sit there and deal with it. And a lot of them were able to do it, get through that exam and move on to the next level. But again, these types of things could happen and they're not anything that you can control. You can control getting there early. You can control in the days and weeks before the actual exam, the way you prepare. But when these types of events occur on exam day, like I'm describing, they're out of your control. So don't try to overthink things and worry about the things that are outside of what you can control. Have a test taking strategy and try to use that test taking strategy during your preparation through the mock exams. Meaning here, consider doing some questions from a topic area that you're maybe more comfortable with at the start of the exam so that you can build a little bit of confidence. Or just go in order and knock them out as you see them. One of the things that we talked about in a recent class here at Serify was how long you should be taking to move through the test. Well, if you do about one minute to maybe one minute, 10 seconds per question, you're going to be able to get through the session with 30 to maybe even 45 minutes of extra time at the end of that session. And that'll allow you to go back through and try to answer questions that you flagged and were maybe uncomfortable trying to answer initially. And also to maybe just go through and check over the entire session to make sure that you were able to answer everything that you did know and that you selected the appropriate multiple choice answer choice. Another thing that's worth mentioning, sometimes students get the impression that one session is a little bit more difficult than another session. And that could certainly be because of the topics that you're more or less comfortable with, but it just simply could be uh, the way the test was presented to you, the way it was written. And just be aware that a lot of times the students will have that impression. And sometimes those impressions that students have are differing from each other, meaning one student might think that session one was more difficult and another student might think session two was more difficult. Just know that that's normal and that's not an area of concern. It is normal, though, to feel stress on test day and even in the lead up to it. But certainly, as we talk now about what to expect on exam day, expect to be stressed, expect to feel it and try to embrace it as best as you can. Know that that's how you're likely going to feel and just go with it. You know, you, you if you've well prepared, should be able to execute on exam day because you've done this type of execution through your mock exam practice. If you do need to during the test, you should have time to pause for a moment and take a deep breath or two 
to refocus yourself and then continue on through the exam. Another quick thing to say, which I think is worth noting, even though you probably know not to do this, do not discuss the exam or anything specific about questions on your exam with anybody else, especially with candidates that are there with you at the testing center on that day. Don't have those types of conversations. Stay in your own little world, focus on what you can control, manage your stress levels, and do the best that you can possibly do to get yourself through, hopefully, to level two. Another thing, be aware that you do not need to get every question correct. You know that, I would believe. You don't need a 100% score, of course. That's pretty uncommon. It happened, I think, once. They had a interview, the CFA Institute, that is, with a level one candidate that actually did get everything correct. Quite rare, but you certainly don't need to get anywhere near every single question correct to be able to move on to level two. Uh, around 70% should be good enough, maybe even a little bit less than that. So that allows you to miss a bunch of questions on an exam that has 180 questions across its two sessions. So understand that. Realize that you're going to encounter a few questions on there that you just don't know, that you're not comfortable with. But you've got that space to be able to move forward and answer all that you do know and pass this thing and move on to the next level. So be aware of that and use that knowledge that you don't need to get this great score on this exam to move on. 70% or maybe even a little bit less than that should be fine to be able to get you through to the next level. And with that in mind, you can hopefully use that to be able to manage that stress on exam day. So with that, we can pause our little video here and wish you all the best of luck over these final weeks of your preparation and certainly the best of luck on exam day.